Uh, hi, beautiful souls. Many people who I coach often ask me, okay, so I am in this ascension process. What is the first thing I need to do to start a healing? You often hear, forget about your twin flame if you've made your twin flame, you know, forget about obsessing about someone else being in a relationship, really focus on yourself. But how do you actually do that? One of the very first things that I recommend to my client and we go through together when I start coaching someone is to help them establish a, a strong self sense of self and a connection to their hearts because this is where all of their answers lie. So many of us have been brought up in very toxic families. Um, some of us even had narcissistic parents and if you know what a narcissistic parent is. This is someone who is so self-obsessed and self kind of uh, centered. Um, it stems from a very deep insecurity and, and from being very badly damaged in their own life, in their own childhood, very likely. And um, that person is incapable of self-reflection, of empathy. They use their own children and people around them as a supply for them to feel better, for them to constantly keep feeding that narcissistic wound that, and a narcissistic injury that they had um, and uh, feel better about themselves. Um, very often in narcissistic sort of parent families, the mother or the father picks one golden child and one a scapegoat and the golden child um, is praised for everything they do they couldn't do no wrong but it, it, they haven't got it easy either because the parent put such incredibly high expectations on that golden child that that child lives to conform to their parents to please that child doesn't have an established sense of self and self-worth. They they do everything to please the parent because they know that that's how they get love, that's how they get approval. Whereas the escape goat tends to be punished, tends to be gaslighted. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically constantly invalidated. Um, you are not right to feel that way what you feel is wrong who you are is wrong you should be ashamed of yourself really like horrible remarks um spoke you know put on you and spoken to you you don't deserve this you're not worthy of that you are like basically emotional mental and sadly often even physical abuse and manipulation of varying degrees um I have experienced this myself and it is brutal but I've had 20 years of gaslighting and this is why I have been healing for about seven years so far from all of that basically needing to rewire my entire energy field how I think how I emotionally process information how I feel how I am and also you know what am I creating all of my actions what is my vision the first step that was absolutely crucial to for me to do was to connect to my heart and to my vision. Who do I actually want to become? What is true to me? And in order for you to do, you need to move from those lower chakras from survival into your heart space and start to operate from that energy. You need to also open your third eye. You need to start meditating and you start really connecting with your heart center and your vision for your life. How do you, you need to start asking yourself powerful questions. For example, if there were no limitations, what would I want in my life? How would I see myself living? Who would I want to be with in my life in terms of, you know, a partner, lover, father to my children? And why am I not allowing myself to have it at the moment? A lot of these blocks are very unconscious and they stem from years of um, mental or emotional abuse in childhood where you were constantly told, no, you're not allowed. And we then shut down our own sense of self, sense of or truth, self-trust. Because we, we know we don't have a choice. The choice for a little child is, I choose to... I choose mom or dad 
and therefore I get love, I, I'll be supported, I get approval, I survive, or I choose myself and therefore I risk death because a, a child cannot survive without the support of their parent. And it is literally this brutal the decision for, for, for some, for all of us when we are little. And this is why we shut down that authentic voice within us, we shut down our heart and we start living to people please, to conform, to do what others expect us to do. We don't, we are so disconnected from our heart center, from who we are. We don't even know what the hell we want and what would make us happy. We don't, we don't allow ourselves to experience pleasure and joy. We don't allow ourselves to feel because all of that is likely linked to so many coping mechanisms that we have developed as children to self-protect from those abusive parents, teachers, um, and other scenarios. So the first step really in our healing journey is to start connecting with yourself. That's how you start peeling those layers of what's not true for you, of other people's expectations that they placed on you, of other people's beliefs of who you are or who you should be that, do, that are not true to you. And you start peeling that and literally chucking that out of the window. And the more you do it and the more you connect to the divine souls and start asking yourself questions like, or even speaking to this, the souls and saying, please help me to speak my truth. Please show me who I truly am. Please allow me to express my deepest, my truest, pure soul's essence through my life, through my choices. And as you do that, as you keep connecting with your heart and allowing yourself to kind of go through that process to open up like a beautiful rose, the more you will discover who you truly are. For me, this process, for example, took actually about a year. For about a year, I didn't have a clue who the hell I am and what I wanted from my life because I was so shut down. So have patience, be patient with yourself, allow yourself to go on that exploration journey. And as you start to open up your heart center, be sure to always remind yourself one extremely important thing, and that is, it is safe for me. It is safe for me to feel, it is safe for me to be who I am, it is safe for me to love myself, it is safe for me to put myself first, it is safe for me to live my life on my terms. It is safe for me to be loved, to receive love, to receive support. And the more you do this, the more you'll start rewiring your subconscious mind with all those messages and affirmations. It's safe for me to live my life the way I desire from my heart. I no longer need to conform. I no longer need to people please. I no longer need to please my mother or my father. And you start basically leaving that behind you and moving towards a self-directed, mature adult. That's how you start reparenting yourself to become, to truly live life on your terms, to be awakened, to be conscious, to be present, to know who you are deep within your soul and allow yourself to express it and feel safe to express it and to receive love back because you have to understand that life is a mirror it's like a, it's like a, you put something out there and if it stems from fear and lack and scarcity guess what's gonna turn up in your life if it's if it stems from oh my god i need to people please because otherwise i'll be rejected guess what you're gonna go get back to you you're gonna get back um people who are emotionally unavailable, people who are abusive, people who are immature, people who are not conscious, because they, you attract, not what you want, but who you are, what you, what kind of beliefs, thoughts, feelings, intentions, and actions you're putting out, out there into the universe in every moment. And if you're still operating in your lower trackers from that place of scarcity, fear, needing to people please, needing not being able or know how to speak your truth, express your needs, wants, desires, talk about your boundaries, reinforce the boundaries with other people and put your foot down and say, no, absolutely not. 
that is not me, that is not in alignment with my values. And I put my foot down, I speak my truth, but you, in order for someone to be able to do that, you have to truly value yourself. You have to know that you are valuable, that you're worthy. And that is a process of unfolding in itself. If you were all of your childhood, um, you know, told that you don't matter, you're not valuable, you are not deserving, then that programming is currently running the show unconsciously. So you have to really look at that, look at your patterns. Where am I operating from fear? Where am I operating from scarcity? What thoughts am I thinking? What feelings am I feeling? What actions am I taking in my own life that are creating the abuse, the emotional manipulation, people who are, you know, unconscious and hurtful and so on and so forth. What within me is attracting that? You have to really look at your own pattern. And this is, this can be brutally painful. It depends obviously on the level of um, abuse and emotional trauma you have gone through, mental or even physical abuse you have gone through. But um, just know that you are powerful. You are so immensely powerful to rewire yourself it takes clear vision connection to your heart operating from from that energy of the source that is unconditional love for yourself first and foremost and then having self-commitment self-trust and feeling safe to bring that into the re into your reality a repetition is key, my friend. My beautiful, gorgeous soul, I want this for you. I've spent seven years of healing and, and um, I've gone to the point that I feel I have um, successfully healed a lot of the core abuse that was blocking me from speaking my truth, from... Um, allowing myself to follow through on those things that I truly desire and want to have in my life. Self-commitment is so important. We're never done with healing because healing is like a spiral, but you will feel within you that you have reached a point that, that those heavy blocks that were really hurting you are no longer there. And instead that there is peace, tranquility, there is a sense of calm, and ownership, like, I've got this, I own my life. Self-trust, self-commitment, and even like being so self-aware that you can spot when you abandon yourself and you do something against your truth. And then instead of crying in a corner and feel sorry for yourself, you actually go and correct it. Like, no, I'm not having this. Because it's like having a, having, <sighs> boundaries with yourself where you no longer allow those old patterns to direct your life to run your life on autopilot but you are actually now commanding and directing your life and creating it in every moment that's what i want for you because when you get to that place of liberating yourself from all the pain and trauma and and now you are in a position of trusting yourself, owning your life, owning your decisions, knowing who you are, having a clear, strong vision for what, for the kind of life you want to create, you'll be unstoppable. You can make anything happen because it's, it's got to ooze out of you. That energy is so magnetic. And especially for women, like you don't realize how enormously magnetic and vibrant you are when you connect with the divine feminine true authentic divine feminine energy within you that is the energy of the inner healer the intuition the inner knowing the energy of creativity the creator energy it's 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 just so immensely powerful. Those are the things that money cannot buy, and you can literally, no matter where you are at right now. <coughs> oh, pardon. <coughs> oh, pardon. Sorry about that. Um, bless you. I tell myself, bless you. My grandma always used to say that when you sneeze after something, you've said something, that it must be truth. So you see how enormously powerful you are. 
It is true. You are a creator of your own life and you create everything. Everything. The good, the bad and ugly. But it's time to put the ugly behind you and start creating the life of your dreams. The life you came here to live. You are meant to live the, the life of joy and bliss. The, the vision that you carry in your heart and in your mind's eye is meant for you to have it. Now it's just up to you to remove all of those blocks, to release the fear and any kind of resistance that is holding you back from experiencing your highest joy and really get you into alignment. So don't be afraid to face your shadow, do the work, but most, and most importantly, connect with yourself through meditation, connect with that vision, connect with your heart and consciously decide I'm now going to live my life from a place of love commitment to myself from a place of self-trust asking myself where am I currently not in alignment with my dream life and why and then releasing all of those blocks are those my beliefs or is that something I picked up from my parents from teachers from culture society religion environment is it really serving me and if not, it's time to chuck it out of the window and choose what's true for you. And you will know your truth because the more you connect with yourself, the more you become your inner healer, that it will ooze out of you, that energy will expand within you. That's the divine feminine that is so nurturing and nourishing and is the most beautiful energy uh, on earth or in the whole universe because it's, it's the... It's like being cocooned by the divine source of unconditional love. I can't really explain it in any other way. I mean, maybe other people would compare it to, to like the heart loving, soothing embrace of a mother, but because I've never really had that, I don't know what that feels like. Um, so for me, what I started doing over the past seven years, I started connecting with the divine energy, with the source, and... Um, Literally making the source my mother, father, mother, father, God. Allowing it to love me, allowing it to soothe me, allowing it to heal me. And this may sound a bit woo and esoteric, but if you try it, you will understand what I mean. It is mind-blowingly beautiful when you really allow that energy to soothe you, hold you, love you, cherish you, support you, provide for you. You will be unstoppable. I'm sending you so much love, peace and joy. If you love this video, drop me a little like, subscribe to my channel. I'll be sharing so much more on how to heal emotional wounds, core wounds, your mother, father wound, how to heal from narcissistic abuse and um, many other things about Twin Flame journey that I've got coming up and the whole ascension process, how to heal and become your best version of yourself. So um, drop me a like, subscribe and if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos let me know i'm collecting ideas at the moment and uh, what do people actually need i want this channel to be for you i want it to answer questions you have and help you on your journey to greatness to for you to master the self the connection to self the whole self-actualization really cannot happen be, you know without you being so fully authentically connected with the core of your essence so the healing comes before your purpose in my opinion sometimes they can be interlinked but this was my experience or at least healing up to a point to get you opened up ready to be able to express you know your truth your purpose your passion your highest joy and step into your mission let me know how you you know what were the most important things for you to master in your ascension process what did you find the most beneficial embodying integrating mastering in your ascension journey i, I love learning from you i love hearing from you because it helps me personally it helps many people who watch these videos and it is really the idea to learn from each other, 
to help each other heal and grow. That's how we will make this world a better place, the heaven on earth that we all dream of, especially those walking the ascension path right now. We want this for all of us. We want the heaven on earth for all of us. So remember that we can create it together every time we heal, every time we master something, every time we release resentment, shame, guilt, heal a core wound, come into peace with ourselves. We actually impact not only our own life dramatically and transform our own life dramatically, but impact everybody around us. And it's like a ripple effect that carries on. So let me know what was the most important thing that you have mastered in your ascension process. What helped you the most? I'd love to see your comments and um, any suggestions for future videos, drop me a comment below. I'm sending you so much love and wishing you a beautiful, beautiful day. Lots of love, beautiful selves.